Still not moved out yet. Hurry up and leave. That's what my mother-in-law, Carol, said as she waved her hand dismissively like shooing away a bug. Next to her, husband's mistress, Emily, also had a triumphant look on her face. As I glanced behind them, I saw little Ken looking worriedly at me. There's no need to rush me so much. Just get out. Emily sneered, causing Kent to look even sadder. I smiled reassuringly at him and gave Carol and Emily a cold glare. I'll be gone in two hours, so don't worry. Fine, just hurry up and pack your things. My ex-husband, Steve, said with a nasty grin. Why did I ever fall for this man? At that moment, I received a message on my phone. Oh, it seems my ride is here. I'll be leaving now. The message said that my ride had arrived. So, I grabbed my belongings and quickly left my in-laws' house. Thanks for picking me up. I got into the luxury car waiting outside. Steve and Carol, who had followed me out, were stunned. What? What's going on? What's this all about? I am Hannah Clark, a 27-year-old female president. I've had a dream since I was little. That dream was to start my own design company. Hannah, you're really good at drawing. Yeah, I want to dress her up in all kinds of clothes. I've always loved drawing. I was always drawing pictures of girls. I would think about what kind of clothes to put on them, what colors would make them shine even more, and things like that. I want to learn more about design. Eventually, I became interested in design itself and decided to go to a design school. There, I met someone who inspired me a lot. Hannah, I really like your designs. I want to create designs like yours. Her name was Amanda Johnson, the daughter of a big design company owner. Thank you. I like your designs too, Amanda. I'm glad to hear that. Plus, you're also studying business management, right? I really respect that. Amanda was learning about business management from her dad while studying design as a student. I truly respected her and was glad to become her friend. I think you have a talent for business too, Hannah. Would you like to study it together? One day, Amanda suggested this to me, and I started learning about business management with her. As time went on, I began to think about starting my own company. After graduating from school, I trained under her dad for a while. I believe in you. From now on, do things your way. A few years later, I received his endorsement and finally established my own company. Having achieved my dream, I was living a busy and fulfilling life. Hannah, if you don't mind, there's someone I'd like to introduce you to. One day, he brought up a marriage proposal. Apparently, the son of an acquaintance was single and without a girlfriend, and his parents had asked Amanda's dad for help. I'm Steve Clark. I've heard a lot about you, Hannah. That was Steve, who would later become my husband. He was a sincere person and always treated me seriously. I was drawn to Steve, and after about a year of dating, we decided to get married. I'm so happy to have such a lovely daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law, Carol, welcomed me warmly and celebrated our marriage greatly. By the way, there was no father-in-law, according to Steve. He had left a few years ago. After that, I was supposed to have fulfilling days balancing work and family. But one day... Oh, a message from Carol. Carol had contacted me while I was at work. At that time, I was in an important meeting, so I didn't notice the message right away. Moreover, I was so busy that I didn't have time to call her back. She's going to complain about it. 
Sighing, I called her back after work. Oh, you finally called me. I'm sorry, I was busy with work. That's fine. I have something important to discuss. Usually, she would complain or interrogate me about why I didn't answer the phone sooner, but today she let it go easily. Feeling a bad premonition, I listened to her. Actually, I need some financial help. I was stunned by the unexpected request for money. What? While I was still processing, Carol continued explaining. Apparently, Emily, who was Steve's sister, had returned home after her divorce. And it's affecting our household finances. I see. It's not just Emily, but her three children as well. Carol muttered. Hearing this, I was honestly conflicted. As a female president, I earned enough to live comfortably, even if I provided some financial help. However, no matter how close we were, it wasn't easy to offer help without a deep connection. Are you planning to abandon us? What a terrible daughter-in-law. Sensing my hesitation, Carol started yelling. I sighed. I'll discuss it with Steve, so please wait a bit. Suppressing my frustration, I somehow managed to respond. Before we got married, Carol was a very nice person. However, right after our wedding, her interference became overwhelming. Do you take good care of Steve? You're neglecting household chores because of work, aren't you? She would contact me like this almost every day. To be honest, as a busy president, these calls were nothing but a burden. So, I once said, Look, I'm busy with work. I'm a president. Women's work isn't that important, so prioritize my talks. However, she got irrationally angry at me. Carol didn't believe I was a president in the first place. In fact, she thinks I'm only doing trivial tasks like making tea or some clerical work. Look, I'm in a position of responsibility as the president. What are you talking about? There's no way you could be a president. Maybe Steve, but not you. Stop lying. Even when I told her clearly, that's how she responded. Carol never believed anything I said and treated me like a useless daughter-in-law who lies. Even now, she's saying things like this. You don't do much work and you don't help out here, so at least provide some financial support. I'll discuss it with Steve. I said it again and firmly ended the call. Well, even if I discuss it with Steve, I know what the answer will be. Trying to calm my anxiety and frustration, I took a deep breath. Hey, Carol called asking for financial support. That night, I consulted with Steve about Carol. Hum, well, handle it however you see fit. His response was indifferent. Since our marriage, his attitude had changed. Before we got married, he was so kind, but now he barely listens to me. So, apparently, Emily? She got divorced and moved back in. What? Emily? However, when I mentioned his sister's name, he flinched and looked at me. Did you just say Emily? Yeah, I think your mom said Emily. Surprised by Steve's reaction, I nodded. We're not struggling financially, so you should help them out a bit. Steve had always been indifferent to what I did or wanted to do, saying, do whatever you want. However, the moment he heard Emily's name, he started listening seriously. Naturally, this didn't make me feel good. Right. Well, maybe a little. And then Steve looked at me for the first time in a long time. I was so happy about it that I couldn't help but nod. Although I earn a decent income as a president, I can't give a large sum. From the start, 
The fact that it's support rather than a loan gave me a bad feeling. Thank you. How about $3,000 a month? $3,000? That's too much. How about $1,000 for now? $1,000, huh? Well, it's better than nothing. So, we decided to provide $1,000 a month in support. With a little budgeting, it wouldn't significantly change our lifestyle. Shortly after starting the support, who could that be? I got a call from an unfamiliar number. Though suspicious, I answered it, thinking it might be a business contact. Finally, you answered. Who do you think you are making me wait? Who is this? It's Emily. The caller was Steve's sister. She must have gotten my contact info from Carol. A heads up would have been nice. What can I do for you? Oh, right. Thanks for the support. Apparently, she called to thank me for the support. But isn't $1,000 a bit stingy? I got annoyed by her laughing words. Is this really how someone receiving support should talk? If you're not satisfied, I won't provide any support. What? That's so narrow-minded. Are you saying my kids should go hungry? Wow, you're a terrible person. With that complaint, Emily hung up the phone. Did I make the wrong decision? After the call with Emily, I started regretting offering any support. But in the end, I was the one who decided to help. I'll just wait and see for a while. So, reluctantly, I continued providing support but I never received any words of thanks. Hannah, let's move in with my mom and live together. What? Why are you saying this all of a sudden? One day, Steve suddenly suggested we move in with his family. Apparently, Carol had hurt her back and he wanted us to live with her to help out. Isn't Emily there? She's already moved back in with her. Emily is busy raising her kids. She can't take care of mom on top of that. Steve argued back in response to my words. We discussed it multiple times, but neither of us would budge. I'm fed up with you, so I'm taking drastic measures. In the end, Steve sold the house we were living in, claiming it was in his name, and sent our belongings to his parents' house. As a result, we had no choice but to move in. Get to work quickly. Yeah, since you're freeloading, you should be useful to us. Carol and Emily started treating me like a servant. At home, they would order me around, clean our rooms, or cook what we want to eat. If I worked late, they would whisper about me like this. What is she doing so late at night? Really, she's so dirty. I was already exhausted from my work and household chores, and their harassment pushed me to the edge. Hey, let me help you. It was Kent, Emily's eldest son, who came to my helper. He secretly helped me without Emily or Carol noticing. Why are you helping me? Actually. He reluctantly told me the truth. My dad's name is Steve Clark. Steve? My husband? Yes. Mom isn't Steve's sister. Emily wasn't Steve's sister, but his mistress. They had been together since their student days, and Kent and his siblings were Steve's children. This can't be. I was shocked by the truth he revealed and was at a loss for words. But soon, anger took over my thoughts. Looks like they've been underestimating me. I never forgive them. So, I started taking action immediately. After making thorough preparations, I handed Steve the divorce papers. Steve, I want to divorce you. What? Why so sudden? I know about your relationship with Emily and children. When I said that, 
Steve looked annoyed. The fact that he didn't bother to make excuses showed he probably didn't have any feelings for me. Oh, that's great. We don't need such a useless wife anyway. Yeah, Steve has me, so you can just dump her. As Steve was about to say something, Carol and Emily, who had been listening, chimed in. With their encouragement, Steve signed the divorce papers. And so, we were officially divorced. Well, I better get going quickly. While filing the divorce papers, I contacted someone to arrange my departure from the in-laws' house. I had prepared in advance, so I was ready to leave that day. Therefore, I decided to leave immediately. Carol watched me with a smug smile. Still not moved out yet? Hurry up and leave. She said, waving her hand dismissively like chewing away a bug. Next to her, Emily also had a triumphant look on her face. As I glanced behind them, I saw Ken looking worriedly at me. There's no need to rush me so much. Just get out. Emily sneered, making Kent look even sadder. I smiled reassuringly at him and gave Carol and Emily a cold glare. I'll be gone in two hours, so don't worry. Fine, just hurry up and pack your things. Steve, who was now my ex-husband, said with a nasty grin, why did I ever fall for this man? At that moment, I received a message on my phone. Oh, it seems my ride is here. I'll be leaving now. The message said that my ride had arrived. So, I grabbed my belongings and quickly left the in-laws' house. Thanks for picking me up. I got into the luxury car waiting outside. Steve and Carol, who had followed me out, we're stunned. What? What's going on? What's this all about? Ignoring their surprise, the car drove off. That must have been tough. The driver, my friend Amanda, said while driving. I had been venting to her under the guise of seeking advice. Just leave that family behind. She had told me before, and when I informed her that I had filed for divorce, she immediately came to pick me up. Considering it usually takes two hours to get here, she must have been waiting nearby. Now, it's time to show them, Hannah. Let's make them regret it. Yeah, I'll show them. She was even angrier at Steve's actions than I was. I was grateful for my friend's support and discussed my future plans with her. For now, can I stay with you as planned? Well, of course. I was going to stay at her place for a while. Amanda's house was much bigger than the one I had shared with Steve and his family. So, it wouldn't be a problem for me to stay there. Wow, Amanda's house is really big. Standing in front of her house, I realized that even though I was a president myself, a family that has been running a business for generations was on a different level. It was a mansion that made me feel that way. Are you Hannah Clark? While I was thinking that, a man approached me. Let me introduce you. This is Tom Brown. He's a relative of mine. He was a lawyer and a relative of Amanda. He was going to help me with various matters including claiming alimony. I've heard great things about you from Amanda. I'm looking forward to working with you. Yes, leave it to me. We will definitely win. His confident nod made me smile. Then, we immediately got to work. First, we filed a claim for alimony against Steve and Emily. We also planned to sue Carol for all the mistreatment and verbal abuse she had subjected me to. We have enough evidence. Saying this, I handed him the evidence. In fact, this evidence had been gathered by a certain individual. This amount of evidence is more than sufficient. 
Thanks to this, I was able to successfully sue them. Shortly after, You're kidding me, right? I got a call from Steve on my cell phone. Quite a greeting. I'm not kidding at all. I received a lawsuit. What the hell is this? What do you mean, what? It's exactly what it looks like. You cheated on me. Did he really think he could get a divorce without any consequences? I smiled at Steve over the phone. Don't worry, I'll make sure you take responsibility. With that, I could tell Steve was at a loss for words on the other end. Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Don't think you can get away with underestimating me. I told Steve, who seemed incredulous, and hung up the phone. Their nightmare was just beginning. I would make sure they paid for what they did. How could you do this to us? The day after Steve's call, I got a call from Carol. Sending that to us, what are you trying to say? It seemed she had seen the copies of the evidence I sent along with the alimony claim. The evidence was footage showing Carol clearly harassing me. It was enough proof for a lawsuit and was obviously taken by a third party. There's no way it could have been filmed like that. It's obviously fabricated. I didn't film it myself. I calmly explained to Carol, who was shouting, in reality, I had no time to record such footage. Then who did? As Carol muttered, I handed my phone to the person next to me. I filmed it. What? Ken? As soon as Ken spoke, Emily started yelling on the other end of the line. It seemed she was with Carol. Why are you there? In fact, Kent had brought his younger siblings to this house. And as Emily started yelling, not knowing anything, he calmly began to explain. If we stayed in that house, we'd all be ruined. Kent mentioned that Emily seemed lively when harassing me. I'm embarrassed to have such a mom. How dare you talk to your mom like that? Emily started yelling again, and Kent sighed. Then he handed the phone back to me. I don't want to talk anymore. That's the situation, so please leave them to us. With that, I ended the call. Then I turned to Kent. What will you do now? I don't know yet, but any place is better than there. Kent said firmly. Until I moved in with the in-laws, they had been neglected. Emily went out every day, coming home late at night. She would sleep all day and basically never take care of them. Grandma loves us because we're her grandkids, but she doesn't let us do anything. Carol, on the other hand, treated Kent and his siblings like helpless children. Not only did she not let them do anything dangerous, but she didn't let them do anything at all. If they tried to study, she would say, you're a boy, go play outside. But if they tried to play outside with his friends, she would stop them. It's dangerous, so don't go out alone. Days of contradictions from Carol left the kids frustrated. Feeling sorry for them, I discussed it with Amanda and brought them to her house. Then let's live together in this house for a while. Kent smiled and nodded at my words. We reported and consulted about Kent and his siblings with Child Protective Services. As a result, custody was taken away from Emily. In that case, we'll take care of them. Amanda's dad offered it. Although Amanda had studied business, she chose not to inherit her dad's company. I'm going to pursue my own path. Now, she works for a small design company. Therefore, her dad wanted to raise Kent as his successor. If I'm okay with it. Kent responded positively. I trusted and respected Amanda's dad. 
I could trust him to take care of Kent and his siblings. Of course, I'll help too. Amanda was also enthusiastic. Now I can destroy that house without any regrets. One day, as I was thinking about this, You've ruined everything. Steve showed up at my office. He claimed it was terrible to take Emily's kids away from her. He probably thought I had leaked unnecessary information to his company. It seemed he came to complain about that. Because of you, I can't stay at my company anymore. Steve was trying to shift the blame onto me. Sighing in exasperation, I decided to explain everything in detail. Do you think I don't know anything? I knew about his relationship with Emily, which had been going on since before our marriage. And I knew he had approached me with the intent to deceive me for my wealth. Geez, who would take a tea-serving office girl seriously? Follow our way. Steve said that to me. While I knew Carol had always thought this, I was surprised Steve did too. You're totally mistaken. I'm not an employee doing errands. But my mom said so. He muttered, and I sighed. In case you forgot, I am the president of this company. When I said this, he looked dumbfounded. He should have been informed by Amanda's dad when he introduced us. That's a lie. There's no way you earn more than me. Suddenly, Steve grabbed my arm. Let me go. As I struggled, someone grabbed Steve's hand. That's enough. I looked up and saw Tom, the lawyer who had been helping me. I had a meeting with him after this to discuss alimony demands. Stop this right now. You're despicable. He shouted at Steve. Taking advantage of Steve's hesitation, I shook off his arm that was holding me. What's going on here? Eventually, the police, called by someone else, arrived and took Steve away. Tom glared at Steve as he was led away. It's okay now. Tom gently smiled at me after seeing the whole ordeal. I couldn't help but feel a flutter of affection for him. Steve and Emily were eventually forced to pay alimony. You're joking. I will never pay. Emily resisted until the end, but there was no escaping it. Amanda's dad pulled some strings and made sure they paid up. They already failed as parents. This much they need to do. He said this with a sly smile. I had known him to be a shrewd businessman since my training under him. With his connections, escaping was impossible. But how did they manage to pay? Emily had been a housewife. She had been barely managing to get by with my support and Steve's earnings. Well, my dad found her a job. According to Amanda, no one wanted to hire Emily, who had barely worked. So, she was placed in a tough job. As long as I got the alimony, I didn't care what happened to her. And what about him? Steve paid up too. Steve was arrested by the police once. Since he didn't actually hurt me, he was released soon after. However, his arrest caused the incident to spread throughout his company. I didn't know, but it seems Steve's reputation wasn't very good. Steve seems to have deceived a lot of people. However, some talented employees had noticed his arrogance. The divorce proceedings started to reveal his true nature. So, some people started saying that he always seemed like a problematic person. Then, with his arrest, those rumors were confirmed. As a result, he was shunned by everyone and chose to resign voluntarily. He paid the alimony with his severance pay. That's good then. He also covered the alimony for Carol. Carol apparently had no savings at all. 
Apparently, Steve's dad left because he got fed up with Carol's selfish behavior. She squandered his earnings, and after the divorce, she couldn't lower her standard of living. So, she secretly received money from Steve to make ends meet. Oh, then why did she let Emily stay with her? She kind of forced her way in. Although Emily was Steve's ex-girlfriend, she had married another man. However, when it was discovered that Kent and his siblings were not her husband's children, she was kicked out. Her own family refused to take her in, so she ended up at Steve's family's house. Carol liked Emily because she was beautiful and close in age to Steve. And the fact that Kent and his siblings were Steve's children also played a big part. Well, in the end, they lost everything. I'm curious to see how far they'll fall from here. I agreed with a smile at Amanda's words. A few months later, Hello, Hannah. It's been a while. It's been a while. I'm glad to see you're doing well. I met up with Kent. Since then, he had been taken in by Amanda's dad and was now living separately from us. My former dad came to see me. Emily's ex-husband apparently still loved the children, even though they weren't biologically his. So, after being contacted by Amanda's dad, he came to visit. He said that even though we can't live together, we're still important to him. Since he already has another family, they won't be living together. Though he had another family, he promised to visit regularly. That's great, Kent. Yeah. Kent smiled brightly. When he was at the in-laws' house, he always looked so sorry. Seeing his change made me happy. It's all thanks to you, Anna. I have this life now. Thank you. I responded to his words with a smile. You're welcome. Amanda, who was watching us, also smiled gently. Initially, Amanda had said, I'll take those kids in. But she was single. Even with a decent income, taking in someone else's children comes with many challenges. That's why Amanda's dad decided to take them in. I want to become a great successor. Kent respects his foster father. Even though he's still a child, he's enthusiastic about becoming his successor. As he spoke with shining eyes, Amanda and I shared a laugh. I'm really glad Kent looks so happy. After parting with Kent, I murmured. According to him, his younger siblings were also living happily with Amanda's dad. This reassured me, and I walked with a high spirit. Hannah. Huh? I turned around when someone called my name. There stood Steve, looking clearly haggard. You've changed a lot since I last saw you. I was wrong. Please, give me another chance. Steve bowed his head deeply. Then, he started talking about his situation. Ever since we separated, nothing but bad things have happened to me. After quitting his job, Steve lost all his severance pay and savings paying alimony for himself and Carol. When he tried to get a new job, rumors about him spread, and he was rejected everywhere. But my mom kept spending recklessly, so we ended up in debt. Steve spoke through tears. I looked at him coldly. So you're going to stick around to meet the president? That's not what I mean. But you're the president, right? You must be making good money. Oh, according to you and Carol, I'm an employee doing errands, right? I said, smiling at Steve. Sorry, but an office worker can't pay off debts or support you. You'll have to manage on your own. Steve's shoulders slumped at my words. While he stood there, I hailed a taxi and got in. Let's go. Leaving Steve behind, I had the taxi drive off. 
That was the last time I saw Steve. Later, I heard through the grapevine that he was caught by debt collectors and sent off on a ship overseas. As for Carol, she fell down the stairs and ended up bedridden. Looks like karma caught up with them. Hearing about their fates, I murmured to myself, Well, let's get to work today. Take it easy. You have a tendency to overdo it. I nodded at Tom, who was smiling gently. After that incident brought us closer, we are now married and a happy couple. Unlike Steve, Tom was genuinely kind, and I was living a happy life with him. Oh, by the way, today. I know, you're meeting Amanda, right? My friendship with Amanda remained unchanged. We regularly had meals together and stayed in touch. But if you start feeling unwell, call me. I'll come to get you right away. You're not just taking care of yourself now. Tom gently stroked my belly. Yes, there was a new life growing inside me. When I was with Steve, I never wanted to have children. But now, I am truly happy to be expecting Tom's baby. Yes, please be ready to help if needed. Amanda and Kent were also delighted about my pregnancy. Grateful for everyone around me, I smiled at the happiness in my life.